Book 4, Line 605, The Story of Perseus and Atlas There was only one, Acrisius, the son of Abbas, sprung from the same stock, who forbade the entrance of Bacchus within the walls of his city. Solas abantiades ab origine cretus eadem acrisius superest, qui moenibus arceat urbis argolice contraque deum ferat arva genusque non putet esse iovis. Argos, who violently opposed the god, and did not admit that he was the son of Jove. Nor did he admit that Perseus was the son of Jove, whom Danae had conceived of in a golden shower. Neque enim Iovis esse putabat persea, quem pluvio dane conceperat auro. And yet, such is the power of truth, Acrisius in the end was sorry that he had repulsed the god, and had not acknowledged his grandson. Mox tamen Acrisium, tanta est praesentia veri, tam violase deum quam non agnose nepotem paenite. The one had now been received to a place in heaven. Impositus iam caelo est alters. But the other, bearing the wonderful spoil of the snake-haired monster, et alter vipere referens spolium memorabile monstri, was taking his way through the thin air on whirring wings. Era carpebat tenerum stridentibus alis. As he was flying over the sandy wastes of Libya, bloody drops from the gorgon's head fell down. Cumque super libicas victor penderat arenas, Gorgone capitis gute cecidere cruente. And the earth received them as they fell, and changed them into snakes of various kinds. Quas umas exetas varios anamivit in angues. And for this cause the land of Libya is full of deadly serpents. Unde frequens illa est infestaque terra colubris. From there he was driven through the vast stretches of air by warring winds and borne now hither, now thither, like a cloud of mist. Inde per immensum ventis discordibus actus nunc huc, nunc illuc exemplo nubis Aquose fertur et ex alto seductas ethere longer, despectat terras totumque supervolat orbem. He looked down from his great height upon the lands lying below, and flew over the whole world. Thrice did he see the cold bears and thrice the crab's spreading claws. Ter gelidas arctos, ter cancri brachia vidit. Time and again to the west, and as often back to the east was he carried. Se pe sub acasus, se pe est ablatus in ortus. And now, as daylight was fading, fearing to trust himself to flight by night, he alighted on the borders of the west, in the realm of Atlas. Iamque cadente die, veritus se credere nocti, constitit esperio 
regnis Atlantis, in orbe exiguamque petit requiem, dum Lucifer ignes evocet aurore, curus aurora diurnus. Hic hominum cunctos igenti corpore prestans ia petionaevis atlas fuit. Here he sought a little rest until the morning star should wake the fires of dawn, and the dawn lead out the fiery car of day. Here, far surpassing all men, in huge bulk of body, was Atlas of the stock of Iapetus. He ruled this edge of the world, and the sea which spread its waters to receive the sun's panting horses and his weary car. Ultima telus rege sub hoc et puntas erat, sui solis angelis eequora subdit equis et fessus excipit axis. A thousand flocks he had and as many herds, wandering at will over the grassy plains. Mille greges ili totidemque armenta per erbas erabant, and no other realm was near to hem in his land. Et humum vecinia nulla premebat. A tree he had whose leaves were of gleaming gold, concealing golden branches and golden fruits. Arbore frondes oro radiante nitentes ex oro ramos, ex oro poma tegebant. Good sir, said Perseus, addressing him, if glory of high birth means anything to you, Jove is my father. Ospes ait Perseus ili, seo gloria tangite generis magni, generis nihi Jupiter auctor. Or if you admire great deeds, you surely will admire mine. Siwe est mirator rerum, mirabere nostras. I crave your hospitality and a chance to rest. Hospitium requiem quepeto. But Atlas bethought him of an old oracle which Themis of Parnassus had given. Memor ille vestuste sortis erat, Themis anc dederat Parnassia sortem. Atlas, the time will come when your tree will be spoiled of its gold, and he who gets the glory of this spoil will be Jove's son. Tempus, Atlas, when yet, tua quo spoliabitur oro arbor, et unc praede titulum iove natus abedit. Fearing this, Atlas had enclosed his orchard with massive walls and put a huge dragon there to watch it. Id metuens solidis pomaria clauseret atlas moenibus et vasto dederet servanda draconi, and he kept off all strangers from his boundaries. Archebatque suis externos finibus omnis. And now to Perseus too he said, Huic coque, vade procul, ne longa gloria rerum, quam mentiris. Hence afar, lest the glory of your deeds, which you falsely brag of, and lest this Jupiter of yours be far from aiding you. He added force to threats, and was trying to thrust out the other, who held back and manfully resisted while he urged his case with soothing speech. Ait, 
longe tibi iupetur absit. Wimque minis adit manibusque expelleri temptat cunctantem et placidis, miscentem fortia dictis. At length, finding himself unequal in strength, for who could be a match in strength for Atlas, he said, Wiribus inferior, quis enim par esset Atlantis wiribus? Well, since so small a favor you will not grant to me, let me give you a boon. At coniam parvi tibi gratia nostra est, acite munus. And, himself turning his back, he held out from his left hand the ghastly Medusa head. Ait leoaque aparte Medusae, ipse retro versus squalentia proturit ora. Straight away, Atlas became a mountain huge as the giant had been. Quantas erat mons factus Atlas? His beard and hair were changed to trees. Nam barba comaeque in silvas abeunt, his shoulders and arms to spreading ridges, iuga sunt umerique manusque. What had been his head was now the mountain's top. Quod caput ante fuit, sumo est in monte cacumen, and his bones were changed to stone. Osa lapis fiunt. Then he grew to a monstrous size in all his parts. Tum partes altus in omnes crevit in immensum. For so, O gods, he had willed it. Sic di statuistis. And the whole heaven with all its stars rested upon his head. Et omni cum tot sideribus caelem requiewit in nilo. Book 4, line 770, the story of Perseus and the Medusa. Now tell us, pray, O Perseus, by what wondrous valor and by what arts you won the Gorgon's snaky head. Fare precor, Perseo, quanta virtute quibusque artibus abstuleris crinita draconibus ora. The hero, answering, told how beneath cold Atlas there was a place safe under the protection of the rocky mass. Narat egenorides Gelido sub atlante iarcentum esse locum solide tutum munimine molis. At the entrance to this place, two sisters dwelt, both daughters of old Fortis, who shared one eye between them. Cuius in introitu. Geminis habitase sorores, forcidas unius partitas luminis usu. This eye, by craft and stealth, while it was being passed from one sister to the other, Perseus stole away, and travelling far through the trackless and secret ways, rough woods and bristling rocks, he came at last to where the Gorgons lived. Id se soler di furtim, dum traditur, astu supposita que pise manu perque abita longe, de viaque et silvis orentia saxa fragosis, gorgoneas. Tetikisi domos. 
On all sides through the fields and along the way, he saw the forms of men and beasts changed into stone by one look at Medusa's face. Pasimque per agros perque vias vidise ominum simulacra ferarumque in silicem et ipsis visa conversa medusa. But he himself had looked upon the image of that dread face reflected from the bright bronze shield his left hand bore. Setaman orende clipe, quem leva gerebat, eiere repercuso forman ad spexise meduse. And while deep sleep held fast both the snakes and her who wore them, dum que grave somnus colubrasque ipsamque tenebat, he smote her head clean from her neck, and from the blood of his mother, swift-winged Pegasus and his brother sprang. Eripuisi caput colo, venisque fugacem Pegason, et fratrem matris de sanguine natos. The hero further told of his long journeys and perils past. Adipit et longi non falsa pericula cursus. All true, what seas, what lands he had beheld from his high flight, what stars he had touched on beating wings. Quae freta. Quas terras sub se vidiset ab alto, et quae iactatis te digisit sidera penis. He ceased while they waited to hear still more. Ante expectatum tacuit tamen. But one of the princes asked him, Exhibit unas et numero procerum quarens. Why, Medusa, only of the sisters, or serpents mingled with her hair? Cur sola sororum geserit alternis in mixtos crinibus anguis. The guest replied, Hospes ai. Since what you ask is a tale well worth the telling, hear then the cause. Quoniam scitaris digna relatu, axite quaesiti causam. She was once the most beautiful in form, and the jealous hope of many suitors. Clarissima forma, Multorumque fuit spes invidiosa precorum illa. Of all her beauties, her hair was the most beautiful. For so I learned from one who said he had seen her. Nec in tota conspectior ula capillis pars fuit. In vene qui se vidisse referet. Tis said that in Minerva's temple Neptune, lord of the ocean, ravished her. Hanc pelagi rector templu vidiasse Minerve dicitur. Jove's daughter turned away and hid her chaste eyes behind her aegis. Aversa est et castos aegide vultus nata iovis texit. And that the deed might be punished as was due, she changed the gorgon's locks to ugly snakes. Neve hoc in pune fuiset, gorgonium crinem turpes mutavit in hydros. 
and now to frighten her fear-numbed foes, she still wears upon her breast the snakes which she has made. Nuquoque ut atonitos formidine tereat hostes, pectore in adverso, cos fecit sustinet angues.